peace i don't think there's going to be a long video um i just got a, a thought or two to share first of all shout out to jesse smollett the guy from empire who made up that um incident and shout out to giant zion williamson too get well soon you know the basketball world was robbed recently because um north carolina was playing against duke but everybody wanted to see the best against the best, you know. And speaking of sports, when it comes to the best of the – okay, I watched this phenomenon. I watched New England Patriots, you know, dominate over the last 10, 15 years. I, I've seen it. And what I've been saying year after year after year, for those of you who gamble, there's a game called Blackjack 21. Now, how you really play is if you go to a casino and you play this game called Blackjack 21, you're playing against the house. You're not playing. It doesn't matter if there's 30 players at the table with you. All of y'all are playing against the house, meaning you just want to get the highest score to beat the house. You don't care about what the person next to you has. They could have more points than you. It doesn't matter. Everybody's going to get paid. Just make sure you beat the house so you could get paid. You understand? So you're not playing against other players. And what the players in the league NFL have failed to realize is that they are not playing against each other. It's everybody against New England Patriots. That's how you win. You play to win. You play to beat the best. And that's how you become the best. You don't play to, so New Orleans could get cheated by the Rams. You don't play so the Giants could beat the Jets. That's not what it's all about. Each team in the league is shooting for the Super Bowl. And they want to win the Super Bowl. And to win the Super Bowl, you usually have to play against New England. So I need the teams in the NFL to understand this simple thing. You're not playing against each other. It's just like Blackjack 21. You're playing against New England. You're playing against the house. So Zion Williamson, you know, Duke, they lost because Duke was the best or one of the best. And UNC is naturally year after year one of the best. And to beat the best, you want to play them at full strength. So even though UNC won that game, a lot of people got cheated because Zion wasn't in there. And if Zion was in there, there's a chance that UNC would not have won. So I'm just saying, to be the best, you got to beat the best. That's sports. Jussie Smollett. This is Black History Month. Today's date is uh, January 21st, uh, February 21st, 2019. Black History Month is almost over. If you look at worldwide current events, especially in America or in, <coughs> excuse me, or in the fashion world, you'll see that every year it seems that they try to come out with a new insult against black people. And it always happens in Black History Month. So this year, oh, man, they went out. They, they had their black face. Gucci had a black face mask that covers over here. And if you're not black. I don't expect you to understand this. I don't under, under, I don't expect you to sympathize with the pain of people who had to deal with that kind of stuff. But for those who are black and who know about this Gucci thing, yes, it was an insult. Mayweather, you're an idiot. You're a fool. You know, don't talk to me. Don't come to me for no advice or no assistance. Don't come to me with your money. Your money doesn't impress me. The matter of fact, you look like an idiot wheeling out all of that money. Were you going to take that money to make it rain on strippers? Like, is this the best thing that you could do with your life and with your money? You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking you to follow nobody or follow me. You obviously have your own way about life. But what's the best thing you could do for these children? Remember, not everybody's going to be a lightweight or a flyweight or what, whatever weight championship you are. Not everybody's going to be a champ, champ. And even if they are a champ, there's no guarantee that they're going to make hundreds and millions and billions like you do. And the, if the best you could do is wheel your money out, like that really makes you feel good, man. Money is an inanimate object. You could buy a lot of things with it and all of that, but money itself is inanimate. There's no spirit soul there. You was rolling around a bunch of paper like you was a big man. And there's people right now watching this video. I guarantee you there's people right now watching this video up to and including myself possibly that will be more wealthy financially and spiritually than Mayweather will ever be in this lifetime.
You can be surpassed, bro. You can lose all of that money. So that money is not really that important. You know, just if you're going to do the right thing with the money, then yeah, money is important. But man, if you're going to be a fool like that, man, rolling money around and taking pictures in bathtubs full of money, that's corny, bro. You know what I'm saying? People need lawyers right now, at least. Now, over the years, man, I ain't going to lie, you know, because like I respect Jazzo. You know what I'm saying? I actually lived in Brooklyn with him. In, in the Nubian Islamic Hebrew community, I respect Jazz because he's a humble and good soul. And if he don't like Jay-Z, then it must be for a reason. So over the years, of course, naturally, I was against Jay-Z. Plus, Tupac was against Jay-Z. And I'm a big Tupac fan, you know? So it's like, naturally, I was against Jay-Z. And I was calling out a few things that I thought that he did wrong. But at least I could say, man, he put his money where his mouth is. Whenever somebody has problems with legal fees in the rap world and the entertainment world, who's the secret donor? Who's helping them out with their legal fees? Nobody but Jay-Z. So I got to give Sean Carter respect for that and his wife. I know his wife is very powerful. And let me tell you something, too. Speaking of sports again, let's go back again. Tom Brady has a wife who is a witch. It's a known fact. She does rituals. She does magic, incantations, spells, whatever it takes to ascertain if her husband will be the Super Bowl winner that year. And she does everything in her power to make sure that her husband is going to be successful, as well as Jay-Z's wife is a witch. Not necessarily um self-proclaimed witch, but you could just see the symbolism in a lot of her activities and videos that, yes, she is definitely connected to the occult. So a lot of times men who marry witches or deal with witches, they have an edge. They get an edge because their wife, when you understand what witches is, right? Let's let's move away from the word demonic for a second. Let's just deal with spirituality. Let's not even deal with spirituality because for me, the only thing that means spirituality is devotional service. If you are devotionally serving the Supreme Lord with love and devotion, that is spirituality. Anything else, man, is something lower from a lower strata of existence, either the intellectual, the egoistical, the mental plane, okay? Everything else, whether it's magic or science, those things are from the material plane of existence. But as it is, um, with the wife like Beyonce or a wife like um Giselle Bunsen, I think that's her name. That's um Tom Brady's wife's name. You can get a lot of things done in the material world because they understand how the subtle and the gross planes interact and they know how to make things happen. Just like Billy Carson, he knows how to make things happen because he knows the real science of prayer. Prayer is dealing with intent. You're actually channeling your intent into the universe. You're not coming as a beggar, but you're telling the universe that because you have a particle of Vishnu in you, you also have creative potential and you have the ability to create the universe around you because everything around you that you perceive with your senses is just photons. So if you know how to pray, you can actually rearrange these photons and affect your life and your destiny. But there's something I wanted to point out. Um, I wanted to get heavier into that topic and stuff like that and drop some gems, but I'm, I'm kind of in a rush. To get these thoughts out before the video's up. There's a big plague coming. You saw what happened in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia got attacked by locusts. And that was all scriptural prophecy. It seems like every country who had something to do with the enslavement of the Israel people. Whether it was the Jews who enslaved us. Or the Arabs who enslaved us. Or the Africans who enslaved Look at Africa. If you watch Dr. Mumbi's videos right now, you got some African countries begging to be recolonized. After all of this, giving your land back to the original farmers, now you want the colonizers to come back and help you. It, it says a lot. It says that you see yourself as weak and you don't have any power over your own life and destiny. And you need a parent, preferably a former slave master. So I wish you guys the best with that. Hare Krishna. There's plagues coming. How I know is because I used to visit Philadelphia a lot in 2017. In 2017, when we would go downtown Philadelphia or we would go in different areas in Philadelphia and you look at the drains, right? The drain, the sewage drains. 
you see water bugs talking about the big cockroaches that fly like four to six inch cockroaches like this big they fly when they coming through your house it looks like a helicopter is in your house right those kind of roaches those were coming out of the drains in the street in philadelphia then one day i was reading an i don't know an online article somewhere and it just showed how hundreds of thousands of roaches came out of a water main or some kind of sewage drain in Philadelphia. And to this day, they don't know why. On a few streets, a few corners, for those of you who do have links to videos or articles about this, it's, it happened in 2017 or 2018. I think it was 2017. Please let me know. You know, post it up in a video or something in the comment section, some links, so that the people could know that this really happened in Philadelphia. <coughs> Philadelphia. So what happened in Mecca? They came and all of these locusts and flying water bugs and cockroaches swarmed on the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba in Mecca is surrounded by all marble. It's all inorganic material. There's no plants there, nothing for them to munch on. Why would the locust swarms go to a place where there is no food unless someone sent them there? Either the creator or harp or whoever you think did it or Illuminati or the Freemasons. I don't care who you think did it. It's still a sign. And you had a swarm in Philadelphia in America. And I'm a man who likes to look at nature and I like to observe patterns and I'm seeing patterns that back when I was 13 years old, I'm 45 now, I was delivering papers and I noticed that there was big bugs out outside as early as the end of February, early March. And it was I knew it was going to be a hot year. I can't say that there were plagues that year, but I could say this, that this winter in New York City, in exclusive nice neighborhoods, I have seen water bugs. In New York City, not outside, but in the hallway of buildings when at a time of year when they're supposed to be dead or um, scampering into people's apartment for cover. They're walking around in the common areas of buildings where there's less air conditioning. They're not even supposed to be surviving in these kind of temperatures, but you're seeing water bugs. And like I said, this is February. We haven't hit March yet. We haven't hit April. So I don't know, but I have a feeling that we're going to have some plagues in New York City this spring and or summer and fall and maybe all the way into the winter. Something strange is going to happen in the natural biosphere of New York City and maybe beyond the entire Northeast region, maybe the whole East Coast. I don't know, but there's plagues coming. Seems like every country that had something to do with the slave trade is going to pay in one way or another so i hope i could give you all some hope i don't know maybe you could chant mangalam bhagavan vishnu mangalam garu dwaja mangalam pundari kaksham mangalaya tanohari that mangalam bhagavan vishnu look that up mangalam that's a very auspicious mantra it brings good fortune out of nowhere. Like good stuff would just start happening, especially if you play that mantra, Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu. If you play that early in the morning, I know I'm speaking from personal um, observations, all right? Like again, I like to observe. So play that Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu. Maybe you can get some protection from this stuff that's coming down. But it's about to get mad real. And I'm going to ask. Any fools out there like Jussie Smollett, please don't mix the black struggle with the homosexual struggle. They are two different things. If you want to put a noose on your neck and call yourself a nigger and throw bleach all over yourself with the help of your Nigerian cohorts, be my guest. You can report that and let the FBI deal with that. But don't add in your little homosexual flair, your body flair. We don't want your body reports. We don't want your body imaginations. Just leave that with the LGBTQT community or whatever they call themselves. With all respects, don't bomb my channel. I'm just saying y'all got your mission. And the black mission is another mission. It wasn't no homosexuals or no rainbow flags up on that bus with Rosa Parks. It wasn't no rainbow flags, no tourniquets, 
trying to tie up Malcolm X's chest as he lay there with his blood pumping out of his chest and Martin Luther King, blood pumping out of his chest. I didn't see the homosexual community there. They wasn't trying to help out. <clears throat> what I do see in America is that the blacks are heavily disadvantaged and every year we face insult after insult and are expected to maintain our humanity. And we will until the horn of Raphael blows. And then when Hamashiach tells us it's time to open up that can of whoop ass, it's gonna be a fun day in America. And I'm gonna tell y'all something too. I'm born American. I have a right to speak against what America does. All of the injustices and the abuses of the fellow man and the environment, I have a right to speak on it because I'm born American. And I'm not gonna give up that right that easy. I ain't gonna jump on no plane and join any enemy combatants. So for that girl over there who became a jump off for the ISIS and had mad nappy headed kids over there, nappy headed sand Negroes, stay over there, shorty. We don't want you back. As a matter of fact, I think you're from Alabama or Mississippi anyway. The IQ down there ain't too right. Stay, stay over there in Pakistan or Afghanistan or wherever you went and have more babies for the militants. But don't, no, 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 don't come over here. Ain't no more wick for you. Ain't no more welfare. Feed your kids goat's milk. You know what I'm saying? Just don't come here with that. Let them chew on coffee beans. That's what you wanted, baby girl. And you're so pretty. You know what I'm saying? You could have had a bright future. And I'm not trying to sound coonish or nothing. You know, the bright future in America. No, I'm just saying you could have had a bright future, but you wanted to be Taliban. So go over there and be Taliban. Don't come, don't, don't beg for mercy now. Just stay where you at. Year 400 is upon us, and the writing is on the wall. The judgment of America is here, and I wish the best for all of the good people out there. You know what I mean? Whether you're from the tribe of Israel, and even for the ones of the tribe of Esau, I don't even wish y'all no harm, because the Bible said to love Esau. He's your brother. Y'all gave us a hard 400 years, man. I don't know, but I'm not going to hold no umbrella over your head when that stool starts coming from the sky. I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm just going to respectfully hold my distance and find out what position the creator has for me. So with all that um, babbling that I just did, I hope that somebody can find something useful from this video, put it together, and go out there and help save the world. Okay? And as always, I always chant this mantra because I believe that all good fortune, both spiritually and materially, is found in these 32 syllables of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Get ready for the plagues, get some land, dig into your corners, and respect God. Peace.